there, it's Tracy here, the air quotes, humorous tutor. Now, the joke for today, how did the chicken cross the bridge? That's right, by cycling. Yes, we are talking about cross bridge cycling. So to start us off, let's have a look at once again the functional unit of a muscle fiber and that is the sarcomere. So up the top we have a sarcomere in the relaxed state, whereas on the bottom we can see that the elastic filaments composed of the protein titan have shortened and also the distance between the thin filaments have shortened as well, resulting in contraction. And so on this myofibril here, I'm just scribbling over it in yellow, the scribbles represent the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And the sarcoplasmic reticulum, or the SR here, is where calcium is stored within the myofibril. And so having a chat about uh, excitation contraction coupling, which is when we couple excitation and contraction to lead to an overall contraction of the muscle. So we have excitation in the form of an action potential and we get membrane depolarization and this depolarization spreads via these T-tubules which are invaginations on the muscle and basically then this uh, reaches the sarcoplasmic reticulum which is, as we mentioned earlier, the storage place of calcium. So once this membrane dipole has reached the SR, we get an influx of calcium, which basically floods the muscle. And what's important here, calcium is vital for muscle contraction because calcium is going to expose the myosin binding site on actin. Here is my shoddy drawing of an actin filament in dark and light blue. We have troponin complex in pink and purple and the tropomyosin winding around the actin filament in red. Also covering that green spot down the middle um, on the bottom, that'll be our uh, myosin binding site on actin. So once calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it is able to bind the troponin complex specifically troponin C, and with binding of calcium to troponin C, that induces a conformational change, whereby we also move um, tropomyosin, okay, and therefore we expose the myosin binding site. So without calcium, the myosin binding site on actin is hidden, whereas when calcium binds troponin, that causes a shift, whereby we can expose that binding site. And when that myosin binding site on the actin filament is exposed, we can form a cross bridge. Now the cross bridge is really just the myosin head binding to that exposed myosin binding site on actin. So the cross bridge is basically actin and myosin bound together. And that's only possible when calcium is present to expose that binding site. Now note that the myosin head here in orange, okay, that is the cocked position, so it's cocked and ready to go, and also there will be an ATP present on this cocked myosin head. Now, what needs to happen next is the power stroke, whereby we need the myosin head to pull back and pull the thin actin filament with it to cause a shortening in the distance between that and the neighboring filament. And what we need for the power stroke is energy, and that comes in the form of ATP. Now, ATP, adenosine triphosphate, okay, we've got three phosphate groups attached to one adenosine. We're gonna cleave one of those phosphate groups off, leaving us with an ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and the cleaved off inorganic phosphate. And cleavage of that bond is going to release energy, and that's the energy that's gonna provide the power stroke leading to the pulling um, of the actin filament via the conformational change of the myosin head. Once that myosin head has pulled back, 
we are left with an ADP and an inorganic phosphate, which basically just dissociates off. And currently the cross bridge is still formed because actin is still bound to myosin. And now we kind of want to get rid of the cross bridge. And what happens is a nearby floating ATP is going to bind that myosin head causing two things to happen. So currently, when it's already been pulled back, that is um, in the low energy state because energy has already been expended. So one of the things that uh, that ATP binding on uh, to the myosin head will cause is the conformational change back to the high energy state, back to that cocked position, okay? And in that process, it's going to be released from the myosin binding site on actin. Now, what that means is with the ATP bound onto the myosin, um, ready to go in the cocked position in the high energy state, it will bind another um, actin where possible and basically form another cross bridge. Therefore, that cycle is going to continue over and over this cross bridge cycling um, as long as there are available myosin binding sites on those actin filaments. And what determined whether those sites were available? Well, that was calcium that was released by the sarcoplasmic, well, from the, sorry, from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. As long as calcium is present, that myosin binding site will be exposed because calcium will continue to bind onto the troponin complex. However, when we get a decrease in calcium levels in the muscle, that basically means that myosin binding site remains hidden and covered up by tropomyosin and therefore the cross bridge cycle cannot occur. So just off to the right there in the middle on this more proper diagram, if you will, what I've tried to indicate there is that cross bridge formation that's going to pull it a little bit, and then another cross bridge formation that's going to further pull it to the left. I say it, that meaning the uh, thin filament. And so basically through repetitive rounds of cross bridge cycling, we uh, change that sarcomere from the relaxed to the contracted state. And so excitation contraction coupling uh, is the process by which we excite the muscle, it contracts and we couple them together and that's that process. As part of the contraction process, contraction is through the cross bridge cycle whereby we get myosin binding onto actin and basically just that forming more and more cross bridges over and over again until we shorten the sarcomere, that functional unit. All right, well, I hope that made a little bit of sense. Um, and as always, feel free to um, clarify anything and we'll uh, see you next time. Thank you very much.